Uh, Kelvin McKenzie, who's alongside the former editor of The Sun in the studio today, says it goes like this. They will get to the, the, the requisite number of letters, the 54 letters. There will be a leadership election, and whereupon that's it. It's, it you can no longer survive in any meaningful sense if you are Boris Johnson. Is that how you see things? Well, uh, that was how I saw it um, maybe a few days ago, but it's such a it's such a volatile situation, Colin. I mean, I think I'm not sure we're going to get to the 54 letters uh, for a while yet. Um, I think there's a real sense among uh, Conservative MPs. I mean, there aren't many uh, here in Westminster now, but uh, talking to them on the phone um, and just picking up general gossip, uh, there's a real sense of them holding back because they don't know um, who's going to replace Boris Johnson. And that's, uh, that's the real break on, uh, on the moves against the Prime Minister. And, uh, and John, as far as you're concerned, it is as simple as that. Uh, they recognise his limitations. They recognise they're probably going to get wiped out in two forthcoming by-elections. But actually, what to do? Who to replace with? Well, absolutely. I mean, the question is, is there, is there another leader who is more obviously going to save them their seats at the next general election? Now, the thing is, the next general election is nearly two years away, probably. Uh, you know, summer of, uh, of 2024 is the most likely date. Um, and so that's not close enough for them to start panicking. I mean, I think if I were a Conservative MP, I would be thinking, well, I won't put in my letter yet because I want to see what happens. I want to see how how Boris Johnson handles the next phase, and I want to see who else is going to emerge from this this very wide field of candidates, none of whom looks like an obvious uh, election winner at the moment. Um, and uh, I think the temptation for Conservative MPs is always to do nothing rather than to do something hasty. Uh, and sometimes there's merit in that, isn't there? I just wonder what proportion of those 12 letters that have gone in post-Sue Gray report, what proportion of those uh, letters you think have been prompted by Sue Gray's report, uh, because actually, surely, most of them knew before what, you know, what the well, situation was. They're acting on something else now, aren't they? His leadership of the economy, um, cost of living crisis, whatever else it is, it's not Partygate. Well, I'm not sure about that. I think, I think the publication of Sue Gray's report did actually have... A, I wasn't expecting this. I thought... I agreed with you. I thought that... You know, they more or less knew what was in it. They knew what they thought about Boris Johnson. But actually, the publication of it and the setting out of all those of all those events and Boris Johnson's reaction to that does seem to have had a clarifying effect. I mean, yes, I think most of the new names that have been put in are from people who were, had already decided that they didn't like Boris Johnson very much and they wanted to get rid of it. But it, there did seem to be a distinct hardening of of, uh, of opinion against him, but it wasn't enough to hit the 54 threshold. And that's why I think the Conservative Party is stuck at the moment, and I think it's going to be stuck for some time to come.